and here we go. Hello there, thanks for joining me. I'm AB Storyteller and this is my Let's Play Dragon Age Origins. Thanks for joining me. Okay, I admit, not being able to find the third band of bandits in Lotheringham was very irksome to Casey. You wouldn't like Casey's when she's irked. So I actually went back and I found the third band of bandits just behind here. Got a few experience points, found a silver sword which I've given to Sten here, and now I'm going to go speak to this chanter and get my just rewards. Blessed are the peacekeepers, champions of the just. Kerching, three gold, well worth it. Got a pilgrim achievement. Fantastic. And now, now, we shall head out to the big bad world. I'm glad I did that. That was really annoying me that I couldn't find that third band of bandits. But now it's done. You can tick it off. That sun definitely is setting. So, uh, well done, Team Dragon Age. Oh, because. Team Dragon Age? The Grey Team? Grey Team sounds dreadful. We're not calling ourselves a Grey Team. Casey's minions? She likes that. They probably don't. Hmm. Dragon Age Team. Team Dragon Age. It's a working title. Working title. Thank you for saving my game. I will venture forth. That'll be an arch demon then. Bad dreams, huh? Yes. Now, in the second from last episode, Alistair's approvement, approval, <laughs> took a major hit after I had uh, intimidated the reverend, revered mother, beg your pardon, to give me the key to allow me to rescue Sten. Now, here's how the conversation went with Casey and Alistair. It was along the lines of, I couldn't stand by idle while that poor man was slowly starved to death in that cave, when I could do something about it. I have seen far too much death and suffering lately, Alistair, hasn't you? That's why I... I behave so terribly toward the revered mother, can you please forgive me? Of course I can, Casey, you're a wonderful person, I love you very much. That how the conversation went in my head. Anyway. <laughs> Which was not the case whatsoever. She just wanted then as an extra meat shield between her and the Darkspawn. But that's the conversation she had with Alistair. It seems so real. Must have been something I ate. Why are they, why are you bothering me? I'm fine. It seems so real. Well, it is real. Sort of. You see... Part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. The Archdemon is the dragon. Why didn't Duncan just tell everyone that? Are these dreams going to happen? So the Archdemon, it's just a fancy word for a dragon then, is it? I don't know if it's really a dragon, but it sure looks like one. But yes, that's the Archdemon. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. Let's see, I'm not frightened. Any other surprises I should know about? You could have told me earlier. Thank you, Alistair. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alistair. I appreciate it. That's what I'm here for. To deliver unpleasant news and witty one-liners. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. Oh, absolutely not. We've got lots of chatting to do. New screenshot. Alistair approves one plus one. Quest updated. Right, and another quest I got, I noticed, was Soldier's Peak. 
Go to the party camp. The last time you travelled the open road, you caught a glimpse of a merchant in the distance. He appears to be following you. If you set up camp, he might catch up with you. Now that is Sandal and his and his father, who we just met on the bridge. I'm imagining. That's Chanter's board. Enchantment. Talk to the dwarf. Bodan and Sandal, the two dwarves from outside of Lothering, seem to have pulled their wagon to the outskirts of the camp. You should talk to them both to see what their see what services they can offer. I certainly shall. That's the one I'm going to make active. Gather the mages as a circle for your army. The Circle of Magi is a group of powerful mages. If you can enlist their help, they will prove formidable against the Darkspawn. The Circle Tower is situated on Lake Kalahad. So, we've got a lot to do. Chatty, chatty, chatty. Let's have a quick check of my item, because I did pick up a few gift items as well I notice um, small carved statuette oh bronze symbol of a dress day now Alistair might like that I believe he said something about uh, following the teachings of a dress day silver bracelet not sure who should get that. That's a travel necklace I picked up in the Tower of Ishal with a sun bleached teeth. Again, not sure who to give that. Engraved silver bowl. Is it like a dog bowl? I could just give that a roach, apart from he's already got um, an approval of 100. Oh, not appearing in this list. Um, what else was there? I think that was it. Let's go have a chat with our newest companion. Yes. I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. Now, if you didn't catch my last episode, I've only done this uh, Dragon Age playthrough. I only played Dragon Age once, and that was with a male mage character. And during that uh, Let's Play, uh, that was several years ago, and I'm just surprised myself just how little I remember of this game. Uh, Liliana was my my romance. So I'm thinking she's probably going to play a more secondary role in this Let's Play, so I can actually play through with characters that weren't in my original party. No, breaks your heart, I know. This vision of yours. Yes, Liliana told us she had a vision from the Maker. Now, I don't know anything about the religion of the Maker, but she seemed to think that other people would think it would be ridiculous that she's got a vision. But I would have thought that people in her order would get visions all the time. But well, obviously, that doesn't appear to be the case. So, what shall we go through? This vision of yours. What was life like in the Chantry Cloister? What would someone like you be doing in Lotharin's Chantry? This vision of yours. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. Very dark and foreboding. What then? So is this... So it's just a dream? You say it with a vision? You dreamed of the blight? That doesn't mean anything. What then? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the Maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. That's just wishful thinking, Liana. Liliana, and this made you want to help me. Uh, did you hear voices? I don't need your Maker's interfering in my life. Um, and this made you want to help me. In my dream, I fell. Oh, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. 
There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the Black devours everything? Oh, the Chantry says the Maker has left us. Has it? I don't know that. Okay. Um, I wasn't awake during Sunday school. The Blight is in the Maker's punishment. Will you defy him? Oh, is that also true as well? Okay, fair enough. Uh, I don't... That's information that Casey doesn't know. Um, so I suppose I couldn't sit by either. That is why you're a Grey Warden. Come, there's a Blight to stop. Oh, plus two! We are making good choices! I'm sure there's more to talk about than just that. Yes? I would like to talk. Well, here I am. What would someone like... You know, let's do it. Yeah, let's go with this one. What would someone like you be doing in the Lothering's Chantry? What is meant by someone like me? Yeah, I never really considered that when I was asking the question, to be honest. You don't seem to belong in the cloister, you know, a beautiful German woman like yourself, sanctimonious preachy and all the other chantry zealots. They don't teach you how to fight in cloisters, do they? They don't teach you how to fight in the cloisters, do they? Oh, I don't know. Shall we go for the beautiful German woman like yourself? No, let's go for this one. Did you think I was always a cloistered sister? The Chantry provides succour and safe harbour to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. Yeah, I was just going to say that. What does affirmed mean? What did you do before that? Why were you seeking safe harbour? So your skills were learned before your time in the Chantry. So that's probing into the history, that's into current events, that's Chantry dealings. And what did you do before that? So let's go deeper into our history. So your skills were learned before your time in the Chantry. I was a travelling minstrel in Orlais. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. Ooh, another two, and a codex update. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace, and then, and in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. A lay sister of the Chantry who can beat the stuffing out of trained mercenaries would be notable enough, but one who can, who also claims to have been sent to fight the Darkspawn by the Maker himself is unusual, to say the least. She joined Alistair and Casey in Lothering, insisting that she would prove useful. There's more to Liana than has, than even and had even been apparent in losing it. However, she spent much of her life at the Bard in Orlais. Is Orlais supposed to be like France? Because she gets a bit of a French box on. A mythical assassin and a spy employed by the nobles of Van Val Rior in their elaborate games of intrigue. Okay, she never mentioned that. I read between the lines there. Yes. I would like to talk some more. Well, here I am. So... That probe and even deeper into her background, but let's Take it back a notch. What was life like in the Chantry Cloister? Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. Well, you said it, not me. Condescending, how so? Yes, they tend to be self-righteous. And that's why I'm not particularly fond of them. Okay, I could make a statement here that might prove my relationship with them. She obviously thinks they're condescending, so let's try our arm. That's why I'm not particularly fond of them. When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, all it right. means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. Oh, I see. Rather snobberish kind of like. Okay. I don't really want the Maker looking in on me anyways. What did you say to them? Refer your ideas to the ideas of the Chantry. But you must earn the Maker's blessing. Okay, there's two choices here. What did you say to them? And I prefer your ideas to the ideas of the Chantry. Okay. Let's try to be 
quite complimentary. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the maker's place to decide if I am worthy. Not men. Not the gentry. But there is work to be done. And I have talked enough for now. Okay, let's get into the mind of Casey here. I think Casey loves the Chantry. What a great idea. I wish she... I bet she's thinking, I wish I came up with that idea myself. Not only can you immediately demand money of people as soon as they walk up to you, like the revered mother did, asking for a teeth. At least with a tax you get something in return, but no. You're supposed to expect nothing in return. And it also makes people like Liana just jump out of their boots trying to help random stranger on some very life-threatening quest. Brilliant! What an amazing cult! God! So jealous that someone else already came up with that idea. And they've got branches all over the place. Think of the money it could be raking in. Yes? I would like to talk some more about this amazing well, chantry of yours. Here I am. You are a travelling minstrel. Do you have tales to share? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Tell me about Darkspawn. Know any stories from Orlay? Do you know any Ferelden legends? There was another story I wanted to hear. Where am I going with that? Let's ask that one. Which one? Do you know anything about the daily? What do you know about Andraste? Hmm, oh, I thought of it just now, but it slipped my mind. Let's ask this one. What do you know about Andraste? Andraste was the maker's chosen. The maker had long since abandoned the world when the sound of her singing turned his ear. Beauty, grace and wisdom enraptured him and he offered to take her from this flawed world to become his divine bride. But Andraste had an earthly husband and would not forsake him. Instead, she beseeched the maker to return to his people once more. So earnest was her plea that the maker was moved and promised that he would create a paradise on earth if all abandoned their false gods and turned once more to him. And this is why Andraste began her exalted march on the idolaters of the Tevinter Imperium. The Maker granted her his powers with which to smite her enemies. Andraste brought the Imperium to its knees, and her victories converted many to the worship of the Maker. Okay... A lot of that I'm still like reeling from. How did Andraste die? Alas, it was the frailties of men that betrayed and killed Andraste. Her earthly husband, Maferath, a chieftain of the Alamari tribes himself, grew jealous as his wife's popularity and influence overshadowed his own. She was also revered as the maker's betrothed and Maferath began to see their own bond waning in significance as Andraste became ever more devoted to the Maker. Out of envy and spite, Maferath made a pact with the Archon Hesarian of Tevinta, allowing his beloved Andraste to be ambushed and captured. Andraste was burned at the stake in Minrathos, the capital of Tevinta. Hmm. Yeah, so let me get this right. The maker who's created everything. Oh, I don't know that. I don't know. Now forget that. Forget that. Why did the maker, who was going to make a paradise on Earth, not was not able to save this uh, Andraste who he was besotted with? I have thought on this too. Did he withdraw his side from her at that moment? Where were all the powers he bestowed upon her? This question has come to me many times, and I have no answer. Perhaps there was no way for Andraste to return to the maker, but through her death. We will never know for sure. Hmm. Let's move on. Don't want to go through all those different... Oh, we are making good choices still. More approval. Yes. Right, let's... One more well, talk with you, I think. Here I am. Uh, let's have a go at that do. one again. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Okay, something a bit more pressing. Tell me about Darkspawn. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, 
They thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. Oh, I remember but the Zatch and the Fade. they were and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Okay. Okay, I'll leave the stories there for the moment. Thank you very much. Let me just quickly check our approval. Six. Excellent. Let's have a quick word with Alistair. What do you need? I'd like to ask you something. Ask away. Okay, do we have anything new from last time? I think these all may be new. Can you teach others to be a Templar? I already said I wouldn't. The answer is still no. Alright, okay. Oh no, beg your pardon. Well, I'm glad I didn't get an um, approval hit for that. Ask away. Uh, just remind me, have I asked this one? Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for good tailoring. <laughs> I thought Templars wore heavy plate mostly. Oh, I didn't think I'd ever seen you wearing it. Not this again. Can't you answer a simple question? Oh, I don't think I've ever seen you wearing it. I keep it hidden under my pillow. Sometimes I'll take it out just so I can hug it fondly and remember the good old days. <laughs> Brings a tear to the eyes, you know. Hmm. Hmm. And what's the real reason? So you say uh, out of sentiment. So this is where you deflect French from his humour, right? Do all Templars make these jokes or just you? And be like, just me, baby. Just me. Oh, you know, between all the guilt and the hours spent in solemn prayer, any good Templar or priest is just bursting to tell a few good jokes when the opportunity arises. You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. But everything you say is fascinating to me, Alistair. I would really like to know. Uh, I do really want to know, yes, then make up something more <laughs> exciting. You don't have to tell me then, I was just curious, not if it's going to lead to some more <laughs> stupid joke. But I do really want to know, yes. Poke, poke, poke. Tell me everything about your life, Alistair. All right, if you insist. It's not like we have anything better to do, right? The truth of the matter is that I did hate going to the monastery. The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Al Eamon had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. Okay. That's going to bring him down, so I think, what did you enjoy about the training? The education, mostly. But also the discipline. You need to have a disciplined mind in order to use the abilities we have. It was difficult, but rewarding. I never really felt at home anywhere, though, until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful when we encountered Darkspawn magic, so I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider home? Yes, and I'm going to take it from him as soon as I get back. Um, I guess my home is with the Grey Wardens now, with you. My home was taken over by Al Hao. Right. Stupid of me to ask. I'm sorry. We won't always be travelling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well, a time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. And I suppose... The Grey Wardens are gone for good, either way. Uh, we still have that headquarters a thousand leagues away, keep talking about. Let's assume we even survive, then they can be rebuilt. You can always keep travelling, this is not the time to think about it. Hmm. They can be rebuilt. I suppose you're right, we can create new Grey Wardens, but we'll never get back those we lost. We have the technology. I wonder if it would ever feel the same. Anyhow, now I've sidetracked us. 
We'd better get back to what we're supposed to be doing right now. Oh, not a single point of improvement. Okay, let's have a quick check of the gifts here. Okay. I'm not sure if you'd like that. Uh, da, 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 da. Silver engraved. That's not a gift. Where's that? That's almost sort of something for Sten, isn't it? If anyone's going to like it, it's going to be Sten. Heavy silver bracelets inscribed with drawing runes. I don't know. You don't strike me as a bracelet kind of a guy. Let's go speak to Roach. Oh, hello. <laughs> Back away slowly, watch that emote. What is all this racket? I seek to understand the dog. We fight alongside each other and I must discover the strength of his heart. You'll discover the sharpness of his claws if you keep going on like that. Uh, carry on then. Do you know what he's talking about, Roach? Well, could you keep it down? Do you know what he's talking about, Roach? <coughs> Compositional barking. The true warrior understands. Genius. <laughs> Pet Roach. Who's a good killer? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Look at that face. Okay. Right. Let's speak to the great stoic one. Yes. What were you doing in that cage? I wanted to discuss something you mentioned. I think you should leave. I have questions. I am hardly surprised. Actually, never mind. Why did you come to Ferelden? To answer a question. I came all the way for that. What was the answer? Were you not at Ostagar when the army was overwhelmed? That is your answer. You were here about the blight. Fine, let's drop this for now. Why would the Kunari care about the blight? Don't you have to report back then? Well, that is probably going to be because it will, once it's dealt with Feld and it'll go to wherever his homeland is. Don't you have to report back then? Yes. I need to stop asking closed questions, KC. So, what are you still doing here then? When are you going to do that? Soon. When, well, I can see you're right on top of that. So what are you still doing here then? I cannot go home. Okay, I'm sorry. Hmm. I'm sorry. Thank you. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. Oh, they'll be fine, they'll be fine. What were you doing in that cage? Sitting, as you observed. That's not what I meant. Very funny. Do you have to be so literal? Cute. You're a silent type, I see. Hmm. Your grasp of the obvious is remarkable. Indeed. One of my many, <laughs> many talents. You don't like me much, do you? Just tell me. You're impossible. Are you going to answer my question? No. Fine, let's drop this now. Very well. You're impossible, indeed. Just tell me, no. You don't like me much, do you? Hmm. Hmm. Warden, if I truly disliked you, I would leave. That I am still here, you may interpret however you choose. Fine. Let's drop this for now. Parshera, was there anything else? Uh... I want to discuss something you mentioned. Is this a new dialogue? Speak, then. Oh, that's enough. Then I suggest we move on. Let's go! As you wish. I'm going to get a negative, aren't I? I got you plus 11! I'm making great choices! I thought that was going terrible! <laughs> oh, boom! Uh, when you're ahead, save. Phenomenal. Right. Let's go speak to Morrigan and then I think we can speak to our new camping friends. 
What do you wish of me? Um, I'd like to ask you something new, I hope. If you must. No, we've had that one. Never mind. Go back. What do you wish of me? I'd like to discuss something personal. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Why are you still here? That could go downhill real quick. Well, let's ask it. I am here because Flemeth commanded me to aid you. Why? Do you wish me to leave? I can do so if you prefer. No, I don't want you to leave. Then I assume our discussion ends here. Wow! Minus ten! Whoa, that was nasty! Um... What do you think about sun-bleached teeth? What do you wish of me? Never mind, never mind. It's worth a shot. Minus ten! And that said, no, I want you to stay. Wow. Would she have just up and left if I said, yeah, sling your hook. You look like a tribal kind of a girl. A fine gift. You Wait. have my thanks. That's... Well, okay, we've... We've clawed back five there. I'm going to leave. A little out of pocket, but there you go. Ah, it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fedic, at your service. Once again, I saw your camp and thought to myself, what safer place to rest for the evening than in the camp of a Grey Warden? I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? How big is this discount? You're free to say, just mind yourself. Let me see your wares. Have you been following us? Yes. Yes, they have, Casey. Let me see your ware. No, okay, let's ask that one. What exactly are you selling, exactly? Anything, everything, but all of the finest quality. No cheap trinkets here. And my boy Sandal happens to be a bit of a hand with enchantments. Oh, yes. Sadly, it also makes us a target for bandits in the light. If there were spare hands to hire as guards, I would have done so long ago. Hmm. You're free to stay. Just mind yourself. Wonderful. Thank the kind lady, won't you, boy? Thank you, kind lady. We won't be a bother to you and your companions, I assure you. If you should need enchantments, simply talk to my boy. Otherwise, come speak with me. Hmm. Who's that? Who are you? Where did you come from? You're a hard woman to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy. Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins. Levy the trader. I'm Katie and I've never heard of you. Duncan never mentioned you. Dryden, black name. Your family lost its land and titles. Hmm. Okay. But Tan Kuzlan's daughter should be well aware that in politics things are seldom as they seem. Say what you will of my family, we are ardent warden supporters and have been since the beginning. But here I am carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the wardens. And for me. But poor Duncan's. Well, no more. A tragedy it is. A tragedy, that. yes. But I know he would want his work carried on. His pledge fulfilled. Really? And what promise did this Duncan make to you? How did you know Duncan? I press him as attention. Let's ask this one. Well, as you know, my family's name is Mud around noble circles. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last warden commander of Ferelden back when the wardens were known as freeloaders. So King Olin banished the Wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. King Arlen. What happened next? That's a bit drastic, isn't it? And then some. Not much is known about that time. After King Arlen died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one. And our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. Okay. 
Um, so what favors did you ask of Duncan? I'm surprised you kept your name. Just tell me what I need. Yeah, that's a kind of uh, edged comment. I like that one. Our family's only crime was guarding the kingdom against the blight. We're not ashamed of that. And what favors did you ask of Duncan? I asked for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honour. Hmm. I've never done Soldier's Peak. Could you just go there by yourself? Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honour. Okay, and why didn't Duncan help you? How will we reclaim the peak? Reclaim the peak, have the wardens. Um, ergo me. Soldiers peak a strategic and symbolic importance. Duncan said that it would be worth it right there. He also hoped to recover lost warden history and perhaps a few old relics. No one knows what's up there now. How valuable is these relics? Your family's faith will be rewarded. I will help you. Let's go to Soldiers Peak. Oh, I don't want to go just now. Uh, what did... What do you need from me? What do you need from me? I can pick my way through the tunnels at the base of Soldiers Peak, but the place... Well, they say it's haunted. And it'll be dangerous for certain. Will you think on it at least? Yes, I will think about it. Was that because my next question was: if I refuse him now, do I lose the opportunity to go? I'm hoping whenever I camp, he'll just still still be here, like the merchant. I'll think about it. Quest updated. Agree to help Levy Drysden explore Soldier's Peak. Levy Drysden told you about the lost Grey Warden's base of Soldier's Peak. No one has been there and returned for over a hundred years. Levy has found a path through the maze of subterranean tunnels to the peak, but he needs your help. I think I will probably do that after we've been to the Mage Guild. Mage Guild. The, the Chantry. Anyway. Let's have a look at what stuff you you've got. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. Oh, I've got to persuade. When you get persuaded, let's ask the persuade. Hmm. I suppose since you told me about you being a Grey Warden, it's only fitting for me to be as open. Awesome. I am originally from Orzammar, the famed dwarven city that lies beneath... Go the on, the you're mountains. not, are you? I was a merchant there, too. Merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. Why did you leave? Lost glory? Ooh, tell me about this lost glory. Our kingdoms once spanned the length of Thados. From majestic Orzammar to Kalsharok to glittering Darmalin far to the west. They say the gold and silver veins ran so thick through the stone of Darmalin that the entire city sparkled. The Darkspawn took it all, of course. One by one, the old tigers fell, and then all that was left was Orzammar. But we were talking about how I ended up here, weren't we? One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. Nobles, they're touchy like that. Okay. And did you? Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I had been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The Lost Tigs. They're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. Better to do something with them than to leave them to rot. That's exactly how I see it. 
The noblewoman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never looked back. Where did you get all your wares from? You just take them with you, did you? And now here you are. Fascinating story. Thank you. You're quite lucky to have done so well. Just how lucky are you? I thank the stone every single day. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? Oh, rumours. Hmm. But where do these goods come from? Not the deep roads. Yes. That's Look, we, we don't rob people, all right? We don't take things from people that need them. The things in the law's tags, what good did they do lying there? I brought them back to Orzammar, where people could look at them and remember. It's not all that different up here. There are places long abandoned by the humans everywhere. Even more now with the Darkspawn coming. What do you mean? People flee from the blight with good reason, but they forget things. Things with value and meaning. They leave them behind because they're frightened and desperate. And sometimes, my boy and I, we find our way to these places before the Horde descends and we save these things. I take them away so the Darkspawn don't get them. Is that so bad? They destroy everything they touch. Right, so you're in that thin grey area between the people fleeing for their life and the Darkspawn trying to catch up with them. That's a very dangerous, <laughs> dangerous overlap area you're in. I suppose it's better than having the Darkspawn take it all. The Blight will not last forever. Everyone has to do make a living somehow. That's what I tell myself, too. Ah, these are dark times indeed. Dark times, my friend. Um, rumours. I've heard a lot of stories of bands of Darkspawn roaming the countryside far north of the Kokori Wilds. They just seem to appear out of nowhere and disappear just as fast. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Hmm, interesting. Any others? I hear news from Dinnerham that Tian Logain has been declared the new regent. It makes sense, his daughter being the queen. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Right, apparently she was wielding all the power as well. And her husband, too busy gallivant and off with his head in the clouds. You didn't mention your son in your tale. Ah, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerum, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here. I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think. And he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. He may not be my blood, true. But I think of him as one. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll see it again. And why call him Sandal? Was that the only thing he was wearing when you found him? I was very generous of you, so you got a free helper. Blood isn't all that important. That's how I've always felt. As long as he's happy, so am I. It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boys are natural working with enchantments. He might have even been leery addled. I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. Enchantment. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it, at least. Let me see your wares. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected. And with your discount. Okay, I've really annoyed Morrigan. What have you got? <laughs> wow. Stuff. Blood Dragon Plate Gauntlets. Oh. Oh, of course, I keep thinking that once you got the uh, the carace, cross, you get everything, but it's no. You need to buy the boots and the matching gloves. And the helmet, probably. Black Metal Torque. Okay. Chanter's Arm and Cap. Portable Bulkwalk. But we don't have that strength. Conspirator's foil inscribed. Uh, uh, the other person is probably going to be wearing that. It's Alistair. He's got the strength for it, it seems. 
heavy helmet, light helmet. It's better, but is it one gold and 95 silver better? Oh, hello. Veshelaar. Veshelae? Dragonborn. Strength of 31. Um, wow, I just saw the price there. No, okay, we'll not be bothered about that. Sylvan's Mercy. Uh, so, better damage. Oh, it's still 8 gold. Everything's so expensive. That's hugely expensive. So, 5 willpower, 8 health regenerating while exploring. I'd rather have that in combat, that's when you need it. Chance to avoid missile attack. Willpower, natural resistance, stamina regen. Increases monetary gain. Dwarven merchant's belt. That's interesting. By how much? How much before I make back my 15 silver and 62 brass? Is it copper or bronze? Longman's belt. Ember. I suppose that the sooner you get that, the sooner the more worthwhile it would be as well, actually. Fire damage. Hailstone. I'm gonna get that. You can upgrade a weapon by enchanting them with runes. Alright, oh, okay. I think I'll wait until I've got a weapon worth. Enchanting golden rope necklace. Mm. Grey warden hand puppet. This tinned helmet puppet is painted with the blue and grey healthy of the grey wardens. Oh, and it's free. Wow. Say no more. Stick. This must be part of the festivity Alistair doll. This little doll, fashioned from rags and stuck with pins, is eerily reminiscent of Alistair. Do I give that to Alistair then? Beard flat, fashioned from nook stomach, this fascinating dwarven device is like a loose-fitting muzzle that sits beneath the beard and keeps the drinker's alcohol accessible even after he loses feelings in his arm. <laughs> well, if it's free, pet rock. That has to be for jail. I've done the Stone Prisoner DLC, but that's the only one I have done. I haven't done or the Warden's Peak. I haven't done Li Liliana's Song. I haven't done Witch Hunt. And there's another one. I can't remember what the name it is, but I haven't done that one either. Well, that's pretty obvious who that's for then. Amulet of Memories. Anti Van Brandy. Complete genealogy of the Kings of Ferelden. Okay. Oh, it's a dog cone! A pearly white cone of unknown material the cone to a dog attached to a dog collar. It, looks like it would be uncomfortable to wear. Why would I want to use that then? Ugly boots. Fashion of lace and porcelain, this expensive mask is the height of fashion for Olesian nobility. Many insects died to make these iridescent, but what way? Okay, I'm getting the impression that some of these are not great. Chant of Light on the Bridge. A lewdly illustrated copy of the Chantry teaching, complete with a hundred page concordance and an overly simplistic collection of daily aff affirmations about how the chant can bring light into any life. That didn't sound like a good thing either. Scented so. This bar of brightly coloured soap smells of elf root blossoms. That could be butterfly sword. It's unclear whether this gaudy bought blade is meant as a weapon of war or simply a stage prop. Now you okay. Cat lady's hobble stick. Now staff carries the odour of cat urine and prune juices. Okay, I'll not bother with that one. Chastity bell. This iron girdle looks distinctly uncomfortable. Sturdy lock keeps its loins secure. <laughs> Oh, a sugar cake. Oh, this is actually worth something now. Dressed in strawberry and sugar cream icing, this simple pa 
pound cake is a perfect pick me up at the end of a long day. Yeah, I'll have that. Oh, how many? Oh, you got 50 of them. Okay, we'll we'll buy one. A thoughtful gift. It says that the thought that counts in this gift always shoot to please. Okay, fair enough. Lump of charcoal. Oh, this is like what you give to the bad boys and girls at Christmas. A lunk of fire would pull from the remains of last night's campfire. How sweet. I think not. Rotten onion. It's unclear which what smells worse, the onion or the rot. Uncrushable pigeon. Pass. Pass. <laughs> okay. Spelled complete wrong. And kings. I'm getting the impression maybe that's not a good gift. Let's have a quick look at Hello. your the boy's enchantment. A bit simple, but he's rather good with enchantments. One of those tranquil fellas actually called him a what was it now? A savant. I had no idea such a thing existed. Okay, what champions does he do? I want some enchanting done. I would like to see the other goods you have. What enchantments does he do? He can fold lyrium into almost any weapon or piece of armor. Though naturally some of the more extravagant materials will take more lyrium than others. It's a process that some of the master smiths back in Orzammar will perform. But my boy here is just as adept at it. Isn't that right, boy? Enchantment! And there you have it. Yeah, the man happy with his work. I want some enchanting done. Maybe. Enchantment! Okay. How do I add an item? I have no runes. Wow. So I can't even enchant any of my current weapons or armor. That just goes to show how bad they are. Hmm. What was that quest completed? Okay, while well, Bodan is well struck merchant, his boy Sandor offers something much more, more valuable enchantment. You can engrave runes onto your weapons, making them more damaging, imbued in them with elemental powers or other mysterious effects. I think I'm going to do a bit of gift giving. We need to make it up with Morgana first. I keep calling you Morgana. Beg your pardon, Morrigan. What do you wish of me? Oh! I keep forgetting, I don't need to talk to you to give you a gift. I just throw it at you from the other side of the camp. <laughs> throw a cake. So... Oh, why are some of them greyed out? Is that indicative of who I can give them to? Okay. I'm thinking that's going to be for Liliana, I'm thinking. Why would you want the Alistair doll? This little doll fashioned from rags and sticks with pins is evilly ripped. Oh, because it's a voodoo doll. Okay. Maybe I sh should I, s I should save. I should save just to be on the safe side. Although I didn't reload it last time because... What do you wish of me? <laughs> I want you to have a dialogue option that says give me a gift. Um that because I didn't want to. Okay. Oh no, that's grayed out. Oh no, I don't know anymore. Oh, because I'm There we go. Um click I am grateful. <laughs> it is thoughtful indeed. Fifty you That's phenomenal. Okay, um, I think that's more than enough then for the time being. Inspired might. Oh, okay. Moderate might. Skill acquired. Oh, she gets the bonuses. Minor magic. Inspired by your leadership, this party members has gained a minor bonus to magic. Inspired by my ability to give her a gift that looks like Alistair. Um, this party member has gained a moderate bonus to magic. Okay, I'm clicking that. 
Awesome! I gotta level up? No, no, no point still. Result! Yes. Yeah. Oh, why do I keep... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so used to speaking to uh, wish. people who give them gifts. It just feels right, instead of just doing it from the inventory menu. <laughs> Sten. Now. Can I repair for the... Who else is it going to be for? I am impressed. My thanks. These are all worth 50 then. Awesome. Do I get cool stuff? Find the strands. This'll be... Oh, where's it gone? This'll be the feast uh, gift. Now, I never... I think when I first got the game, this hadn't been released, and I was playing... had had already been playing it for quite a while when this was downloaded, when they eventually released it, so I don't think I actually ever touched it. Because I certainly don't remember ever giving uh, Morrigan a doll. I remember Dog finding a cake. I don't remember buying a cake. I wish I knew now, uh, then, well, no, now. Okay, skill acquired! Despite by your leadership, this party member has gained a minor bonus of strength. And a moderate bonus of strength. Awesome. Let's actually have a look at your um, sh character sheet, in fact, because that's where I'll find your strengths. Oh, it's not here. Plus seven. That could be all from the bonus, or it could be from some of the equipment. While I'm here, actually, your strength is 35, Alistair's 22. Concentrating on the cunning. So you're a rogue. Bard. So you got good cunning and willpower, but you got, well, I think, much better dex than me. Yeah. And a much better willpower. You're all about the magic. Surely you should have a level up by now. No? Right, before I make the same mistake again, let's just go through... If anyone's going to like a cake, it's going to be a lily, aren't it, isn't it? Ooh. Actually, to keep up with the uh, role-playing, I should give Alistair a thoughtful gift. To apologize for how I spoke to the revered mother. Oh, thank you. That's Ten. very nice. Results. That kind of brought us back to where we were before. Tell. Should that be for Morrigan as well? I think I might have to make a decision about that later. But let's give Liana a gift, seeing you know, as we're giving a gift to everyone. Cake? Are you a cake person? Why, thank you so much. What? Five? Okay. Oh, where's dog? Do I have to speak to Roach? Is it because you're in that extra dog slot, is it perhaps? I want to give you a stick. He's a silly doggy. Yes, you are. Okay. I think I'm gonna. I would have to add him to my party as an actual main member to give him uh, a stick, but I, I think he's there. His approval is already 100, actually, now that I think of it. So, job done, big tick. Wow, we've spent the entire episode in the camp, but we've had some very good chat, learned a lot of history. I've got very <laughs> lots of approval points. I'm calling that a win. So I hope you enjoyed that. With lots of chat. Next episode we'll have lots of action. So I hope you enjoy uh, join me for that one. So until then, take care of yourself and goodbye for now.
ביי ביי!